um, we spent seven thousand dollars and you wouldn't have to so I would kind of pick a salty one um, you can move them around if you have to and stuff I know it's tough we're working on a new plan I promise you um, while they're getting situated I will just give you a brief update we filled out a ton of paperwork we did a ton of fixing records and whatnot to be accepted by the bank they have our paperwork right now for the loan they are saying that it looks good at first glance they're they're going through the official things now i do have to meet back with them on tuesday to fix a few things that they wanted me to redo and present a little differently um that being said with the pledges of of uh, for fundraising or fundraising for the building between what's come in and what's being pledged. Um, God gonna do a thing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and if all the pledges that have been made come in, we're currently at $65,000. And so we're just believing that God's gonna do a big thing and we're really hoping for like, we're gonna get to like 150. I know that sounds bananas for a small church, and we don't even talk about money ever, but it's just one of those seasons where we just felt like God was going to do a thing, and that if people were going to open their hearts and pour in their money, and God was going to bless them in all kinds of ways, not just financially, and and that but God was going. And this has really stretched my faith beyond what you could ever understand. I had greater faith that I could uh, pray for a limb to grow back last week than I could raise sixty-five thousand dollars. But now God has expanded my faith as well. Um, so. Just continue to pray, not just that the video we put online has gained, um, it's got a lot of attention and we've had a lot of people say, hey, um, when y'all start working on it, we want to jump in and work. And even there are some people that can't ever, that don't even live in the area, they'll just come and help. And, and so God is behind our movement. God is behind yes. what he's put on our hearts to steward. And a big part of what he's put on our hearts to steward, are we filming? I'm just going. Mm -hmm. All right. A big part of what he's put on our hearts to steward is the fellowship that we share here, the, the how we break bread together, how we live life together, how we move each other's furniture and stand each other in prayer, and we help each other financially if need be. We, we try to do all this collectively as a spiritual family. That's like the core foundation of who we are and what we're doing. We'll call that, we spent the last three and a half years trying to really solidify that in these relationships. If you're new today, trust me, we're really good at this. It takes about two weeks for you to graft into this tree if you want to. <laughs> Don't feel like you're behind the curve. We set it up that way. Phase two is going to be these prayer teams we've been talking about. And, and so, because we were a, a group of people who, yes, were called to come together and do potlucks and live life and move furniture and work together and do all these things. We were very much called to do that, and we will never forsake that initial calling of fellowship because that's what we find in the story of Acts. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. We're also a people who believe that Jesus didn't come to lose control of the world one day or and come and burn it all up. He didn't, we, didn't, we're not called, we don't believe that Jesus came to simply give us a ticket out of hell when we died. We don't believe that death sets us free from sin. We believe that Jesus sets us free from Amen. sin. And so we believe, therefore, that Jesus can transform us, set us free, save us from every situation right here, right now. We believe in what we call a transformative gospel. If it's not transforming you, he might not be your king. And that's okay. Like, that's just a thing you have to reconcile with. And then it's just, boom, it's a free thing. You just get right with the king, and he starts to transform your life. Yeah. 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 Salvation without transformation. What is that? Yeah. He came to save us. And if you don't know the roots of those words, uh, uh, that where they got salvation from, it wasn't a direct translation the way we think it is. It was a word that covered all things, spiritual, uh, physical. It covered right here, right now. It covered imminent danger salvation. It covered eternal salvation. It covered everything because Jesus paid for everything. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. So it's a good Big thing. This phase two, we're gonna we we've, we've always prayed for people um, as a ministry in general, but now we're feeling grace to activate everybody as prayer warriors, each and every one of you. We talked a couple weeks ago about the different kind of um, roles to play in in um, in prayer. We're gonna get on that. Oh, let me just go through my slides. It's a little bit easier. What we just did. God gonna do a thing. Kirsten makes fun of me because I mess up my spelling sometimes. That's on purpose. I promise you. God gonna do a thing. Is a type of prayer to always remember. Let that always be your go-to move. Let God's just going to do a thing. Yeah. Pull out your little Barney Fife badge. What we, for those of you who weren't here a couple weeks ago, we said 
that's because you might not be as impressive to the demonic kingdom or the problems that people are facing or whatever. You might not have anything. You might be just like Barney Fife, a little bag of bones with no intimidation in you. But you got a badge that says you know a guy. Yeah. Yeah. And our badge says we know a guy named Jesus Christ. Yeah. And the same spirit that raised him from the dead dwells in us behind that badge. Yeah. So pulling out that badge and saying God's going to do a thing. Hey, it's not even your reputation on the line. It's his. That's right. So go for the gusto. Just speak healing, speak newness, speak yeah. salvation. Yeah. Just speak it, speak it, yeah. speak it, speak it. Yeah. It's, it's good, it's good. Just go for it. Why waste time yes. working and working and working at something when God just wants to do a thing sometimes? Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't know, go ahead and swing for the fence. Yeah. Now, what happens next is either A, people are changed. That's awesome. That's great for everybody. That's great for you. You're as excited as they are the first hundred times you see that. You know, it's amazing. But then every now and then it doesn't work. So then we, we build doctrines. We say, well, their sin was too great, or they had too much of this, or maybe, uh, maybe I was off. No, not that. Sometimes it's time to go to war. Sometimes yeah. it's time to put some work in. Yep. Swinging for the fence, yes. great. And if, I, if you're going to swing one time, swing for the fence. Promise you. But if you're going to be a warrior for Christ, you're going to have to sign up for every now and then, yeah. digging in and doing some work. Yeah. yeah. Doing some, yep. putting in some time, some energy, some attention. Yep. Now, this is very important. This is where if you start doing this, this is where you'll figure out real fast you can't save the world. No. Because each problem that's not going to get a home run from Jesus after the, the first gate, whatever reason, each problem that requires partnership, you'll figure out real quick you've only got so much partnership to give. Yeah. I've been in churches that had prayer lists 10 minutes long. It's brutal to listen to. <laughs> No one's praying for them. No one's doing the work. It's just a list of sickness, and it is so deflating yeah. to hear it. Wow. Yeah. I'm not trying to dog anybody, but it's deflating just to hear a list of sickness. Yeah. I would rather have a people who would open their hearts and let God knit someone to your heart, yep. graft someone into your heart, where it's like a, they call it a burden in the older language, where a burden to pray for somebody yeah. comes yeah. on you, and you're... Not just burden, but you're connected. Yeah. I have knit my heart to people that don't even live in this state. I've knit my heart to people that don't live in this country at times. I can feel them yeah. in the spirit and I can pray for them. We'll come back to that yeah. more. But opening your heart to be knit together is a big part of being a warrior in prayer. Okay? Yeah. You want to be a greater warrior? Bigger heart. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. We just need some tools to move forward. Yes? Yes. Yeah. All right, when we talked about prayer, the need for prayer, this is the slide that will kind of categorize the needs for prayer. Sometimes you just have, and we're just, this is a recap, so I'm not going to go in great detail. Dealing with spiritual problems. Some things are possession, some things are oppression. Possession is a lot less frequent these days. Oppression is very common. On most major problems, addictions, a lot of things, it's, oppression is involved. Uh, the, the one secret you need to know about uh, that I feel in our time of ministry we've learned is uh, that Barney Fife badge will cast a possessed demon, a person who's possessed out in a second. Yeah. That's, That's like the easiest one of all. Yes. Yeah. The yeah. oppressed one is important to recognize because casting out something that's not actually in them doesn't yeah. work so good. Yeah. And it just takes one step back and then whispers in the air and says, see, I told you not to come here. Because yeah. it's whispering lies. That's its yeah. main job is whispering yeah. lies, whispering lies. So yeah. we deal with those things accordingly. The Barney yeah. Fife badge, very important in these things, okay? I, is everybody okay with the Barney Fife badge analogy? Yeah. Because it's yeah. just yeah. easier for me to roll that off my what tongue. Gonna, what are you going to do if someone's like, no? I leave right now. All right, next category. We talked about this in detail. Some people say, I need prayer, and they're basically asking for life direction. Life direction, if you are on a prayer team, unless you are called to be a pastor, appointed to be a pastor, anointed to be a pastor, be leery of giving life direction. Yeah. Yeah. You can. Some people teach you to give a preface. Say, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not a pastor, you need, you know, but here's what I think. Well, yeah. let me tell you human nature. Come on. People go, yep. at nine, well, 80% of people are going to just ask everybody until they hear what they want to hear. And they're going to say, that's God. Oh, that's God, isn't that? I knew I was yeah. supposed to get that new king camp. Um, yeah. 
So be leery of giving life direction if you're not a pastor. How do you yeah. know if you're a pastor? I'll tell you later. Okay? <laughs> what we said to do in that case is somebody's like, yeah, I need life direction. They're not going to say that. It's going to be a more specific question. Just say, hey, do you have a pastor in your life if you don't know the answer? And if they say, no, I don't. Well, let's pray that you find somebody to stand with you in all these life yes. decisions. And just kind of punk the ball. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just keep down the road. <laughs> Healing prayer. Okay, this is where we're going to kind of work on today. This is where the, the prayer teams become of the utmost importance. This is where the work starts to dig in. We're going to practice. Everybody in this season, and hopefully forever, we're going to practice the God's going to do a thing. Yeah. You would be shocked at how often that just works. Yeah. You'd be shocked at how often it's just like, all right, God, heal. Now, I will tell you this. If you got prayed for it and you didn't feel anything, don't be discouraged. I had prayed for people. They felt absolutely, positively nothing. And the next time I saw them, they were like, you know what? The next day I woke up and he was healed. That's bananas. That's true. Okay? Yeah. 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 Kirsten was shocked at that one. No, I, oh my gosh, I'm into it. Uh, the, she's, she's my hype man, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If I don't have scared. the perfect faith, yeah. he's like, what's going on? Sorry. <laughs> this is between me and her. Yeah. <laughs> God going to do a thing, you'd be shocked. You'd be shocked that sometimes you just feel the urge to pray for your business that way, your home that way. God's going to do a thing. Let's just do it and believe and move on. Let's just quit making this so complicated. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah? Yep. yeah? All right, plan B. Let's make it complicated. Right. <laughs> Prayer teams, we broke this down into basic categories. Stirring the spirit, we called it. Intercession, blessing or thanksgiving, speaking, prophetic words and visions. All right? We did this two weeks ago. If you want to go back and, and look at the foundation of all this stuff, we're going to focus. It's really hard to truly dissect all of the most of these because they work in use. They work yeah. in tandem together. Yeah. Um, and so like a lot of people can do all of these, but a prayer team is very efficient because you can break out and to just play your roles. If you can just play one role, you can be really good at it. We're going to focus on stirring the spirit and intercession today. Those two things often go hand in hand. Prophetic words and vision can can operate in these things as well quite easily. Um, uh, sorry, I'll figure it out as we go. <laughs> intercession, for those of you who don't remember, that is when you, uh, can, we, we, we the best describe that as you're going to continue to pray for somebody. You're going to intercede for yep. somebody. Stand in the gap for yep. somebody. Like, they're gone. They came for prayer and they're gone. And you're still praying for them. Yeah. You're at work the next day. God put them on your heart because you yes. opened that heart. He knit you together. Yes. You're not worried about them. You're praying for them. Yes. We're interceding. The yes. same prayer. We pray. We're interceding. We're interceding. We're interceding. We're interceding. Yes? Yeah. That's the way we're going to um, treat intercession for the sake of these prayer teams. It can be viewed other ways. Yes. Uh, we can talk about that later. But we're going to stick to our subjects, right? Yeah. Stirring the spirit. What we said for that. These two things kind of go hand in hand, but they don't have to. The person who we categorize as stirring the spirit, we're going to show in a second that uh, what that means to stir in the spirit scripturally. But um, stirring in the spirit is a person who may just be in the prayer team, but they're not really doing all the talking. Maybe they look like they're not doing much at all, but they're praying in their spirit. And when you pray in your spirit, you stir the spirit. When you stir the spirit, the people who are going to move in godly inspired blessings are going to can step into that. People who are going to move in prophetic words and visions, they're going to step into that stirred spirit. Now, you might not be the person who gets to say all the great words. You might be the person who says nothing. You're definitely not the center of attention if that's your job. But it's a very important yes. job. Yes, and yes, I can yes. tell you what, when we ended up in, uh, when we used to go around to different places more, pre-COVID, um, when we end up in a house where a lot of people have been taught to stir the spirit, the gifts come alive, yeah. like in a yeah. mighty, mighty way. Yeah. So stirring the spirit, praying in tongues, whatever, this this is a very, very important role. Um, also, that often combines well with intercession. Yeah. Just real quick, 1 Corinthians 14, 14. For all, for, we have a mixed crowd in here. We have some people who are um, from a little more conservative background and don't necessarily speak in tongues yet or don't want to, and now either one's okay. We value all walks of Christendom. Yeah. We have people here who are more charismatic and operate in these things. This is to help everybody make sense of this stuff scripturally. This is Paul just breaking. This is where I told you a couple weeks ago that he connects this language together. If I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, right? He just connected two words, but he made them one idea. 
My spirit prays when I pray in tongues. But my understanding, my, my thinker is unfruitful. Right? He's not belittling one. He's just making a distinction. The next slide. He says, in conclusion, I will pray with my spirit. See, he doesn't use the tongue language here on out. He just says spirit. I will pray with my spirit, and I will also pray with my understanding. Or in our case, English. I will sing with my spirit. We've all heard that in here. Yeah. I will also sing with understanding. We've also heard that in here. Otherwise, if you bless, speaking blessings and thanks, if you bless with the spirit, which is happening the whole time that person is stirring the spirit, if you bless with the spirit, how will he who occupies the place of uninformed say amen? Meaning, how was the new believer or the person who doesn't understand what's going on, how are they going to agree with you if you're just stirring the spirit? Doesn't belittle the importance of the role. Yeah. It just says they're not going to understand that. It actually does kind of work, regardless of their understanding. But he's saying, hey, why don't we add some understanding to that as well? Yeah. Yeah. So as we're speaking blessings, as we're speaking thanks, we need, again, this is where the multiple role thing comes yes. in. We need someone to stir the spirit. Yeah. We need that. Each group, we need that. We also need someone to do it in English because they need that. Yeah? yeah. And, and, and the stirring spirit, often, whether you fully understand it or not, this is where, now, I didn't actually want to talk about tongues today, believe it or not, but um, uh, this is the part where, this is where our part where I believe a lot of the naysayers of the spiritual gift of speaking in tongues did it wrong. There's talk about interpretation of tongues, the gift of interpreting tongues. Now, you, I, I have seen that work two ways. I've seen that work where um, you can just understand languages. It's really weird. Like, you can speak in tongues and other people can hear it in their own yeah. language. It's a really yeah. weird thing. I've also seen it to where people can speak in tongues and people who can hear in the Spirit hear words in English and speak them. Yeah. It's a weird, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an angle of interpreting tongues that, 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 can, that the naysayers don't, don't get. Uh, and that's a, it's a hard sell. We're not here to fight a war. We're just praying for people, right? Yeah. Stirring in the spirit, spirit person stirring, people speaking blessings. The intercession comes into place, though, yes. right? So the intercession does not necessarily have to take place right now, but what happens next is of the utmost importance. Here's what I've seen. Here's been the criticism of healing ministries for decades. People go, people get touched, people get healed. Everybody loves that, right? Who's complaining about that? The criticism... Beyond just other scandals, but the main criticism of actual healing ministry is that people walk away and weeks later they say, I thought that God healed me, but then it came back. So it must not have been God. It mustn't have been God. It must have just been tricked. I was caught up in the moment. I was emotional. Your emotions didn't heal the problem. Yeah. God healed the problem. Yes. Whether it's stuck or not is another story. This is where I believe the healing ministries in general, and, and this is a bold statement for a, a small fish in the pond such as myself to make. This is where I believe healing ministries have failed over the years. We don't couple intercession with healing yes. properly. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah? yeah? I use these examples. One, if you went to a doctor for a problem, you expect him to give you in these day and age a bottle of pills. Would you expect one pill to heal you once and for all? No. Probably not. I'm not a medicine expert. I don't think they make those. Yeah. You would expect to take two a day or two, three times a day until the bottle was complete because you believed that it would heal you, but you needed to be dosed with it. Like you need to be saturated with whatever you're putting your faith into in that moment, right? So these healings, uh, remember, it's miracles and healings. Yeah. Miracles are instantaneous. They're categorized as signs and wonders, scripturally speaking. Yeah. And then healing by nature is a progressive thing that God is yeah, doing. It's, it's usually normal. faster than normal. It's usually, uh, oftentimes, it's impossible things that are being done. Yeah. But it's a, it's a progressive thing. So why, if one prayer puts it in motion, why don't we believe we need to take a whole bottle? Yeah. Yeah? Mm. yeah? Yes. That's good. So I, I used to say it was like um, a bottle of pills. You take the whole bottle of pills. You keep praying and praying and praying into the healing. It's not a lack of faith. It's a belief in spiritual war. Yes? Yeah. I also came up, I also came up with a new um, imagery, if you will. I think this one works very well. <laughs> Intercessory prayer in, um, in, in coupled with healing and miracles and things, it's like a cast over a broken arm. Now, this is very important to, to picture in your head, if you will. Imagine a real, a real deal broken bone. 
If you were going to go to the doctor, you'd go. The first thing he'd do is he'd look at it. He'd x-ray it. He'd get a prophetic vision. He would set it in the right place. He'd put it back where it was supposed to be. And then he would wrap a cast on it so that it would stay there while it healed. Wow. Intercessory prayer is very much the same thing. Our initial prayer team attack, stirring the spirit, speaking blessings, this prophetic x-ray vision person stepping in and stepping in and speaking things. We're, 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 we're shooting for the home run. God, heal them, heal them, heal them. That's the bone set. Yeah. But without the intercessory prayer, we'll be no better than everybody else. We'll have we'll have a, 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 a intermittent track record at best where they say, I thought it worked, but then it didn't. Yeah. I did I tried to do this for people when we were at Brooklyn, you know, we had prayed for lots of healings. We saw lots of miracles. Yeah. Uh, lots on the street. It was a wild time for yeah. Kirsten and I to be doing evangelism. And I didn't have the proper team in place to do the intercessory work, and it almost killed me. And it sucked a lot of life out of me, to be brutally honest with you. Because, as I said earlier, you will learn in this journey, if you don't just believe me right now, you yes. can't save the world. Um, you know, one person, Jesus is like, he's big, he's got this. But he needs us, yes? Yeah. He needs you. And so, um, <clears throat> this intercessory prayer, it wraps around this wounded area. Now, it could be a wounded heart. Yeah. It could be blind eyes open. It could be, well, I don't care. It needs to be supported by the cast. It needs to be propped in the right place for X amount of time so that it can heal yes. right. How many of you know, see how many of you did extreme sports without your mama knowing. How many of you know that if you break a bone and don't set it, it will just grow back however it is? Mm. <laughs> yes. It'll grow right back however it's sitting. It doesn't care if it's straight or crooked. It just grows back. We are similar in many areas of our life. Emotionally, physically, it, it, we are broken sometimes. And until we give it to God and get the support we need to let it heal in that place, we will just continue to be fixed in that broken position. Yeah. We gain identity in our brokenness. We yeah. gain identity in our, in our guilt and our shame. Yeah. We gain identity in our traumas and the things that happen. Yeah. It's why we start today with God forgive all those who have offended yeah. me. Amen. It's just scriptural. Yes. We give it to God as, as often as we have to, as many times as we have to, but it has to get out of us. It has to get out of us so that we can walk in the newness and the fullness of God that he's promised each and every one of us, regardless of how much we think we have paid for it. He doesn't need payment. He yes. needs faith for it. Yes. Amen? Yes. So we, we, we stand in the gap and intercede. Now, like anything else in Christendom, there will be a spectrum of this. Sorry. There will be a spectrum of what it looks like to be a intercessor, to be a person who can stir the spirit. We'll kind of talk about these two things at one at a time. There'll be a spectrum. On one end, on one end, you're like, yeah, I feel like I'm supposed to do this. I don't really know what's going on, but I'm going to start here. We're just going to do this. I, 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 they prayed for me. I speak in tongues. I, I can just do that. I don't, I, I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to do that. We need that more than you believe. That is of the utmost importance to be a, on the far end of this, we're going to read the scripture later. On the far end of this, you actually just leave the, the shore of reality. And you step into what Paul described as the third heaven. You leave what man can see, smell, touch, and hear, and remember, and talk about it. You leave all that we know, and you can step into another realm. Yeah. Isaiah did it, Ezekiel yeah. did it, John did it. Like It's a whole list of people who did it. Now, before we go any further, I want to clear up one misguided notion that came about in the, in the Pentecostal realm decades ago. We're not all called to do that. Don't feel bad if you're not. You're actually in the majority if you're not called to lose touch with reality. Yeah. Yeah? We're going to get into all this more, but like, the far end of the spectrum is you give up everything to hear what God is saying. You give up everything to see what he's doing in the other realm and to hear what he's saying so that you can come back when it's time and release something that nobody wants to hear or understands what you're saying, but it moves the mountain. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to talk about uh, the, that spectrum a little more. Um, so um, what they called these guys in the Old Testament, it's the Old Testament word, um, it was called... Uh, we would think of them, and from the prophetic uprising, we would, they were called watchmen. The prophets were often called 
watchmen. They were watching the spirit realm, looking out for the natural realm. Um, I'm going to combine this language with um, intercessors. I'm going to combine. The intercessors don't have to be prophets. Prophets don't have to be intercessors. But I believe we're all in that watchman category. Now, there was a move and then there was some weird stuff that came about. I, again, I'm sorry. I'm a little clumsy today. Sorry. No, you're good. Lots of things have been abused and misused and misunderstood in the church realm over the decades. I can't be handcuffed. None of us should be. I can't stop using words that are in the Bible because people misunderstood yes. them. We just have to read them, go with what we know. Yeah. Yes. So we're going to call intercessors and, and prophets. And they're watchmen. Now, there was a whole vein of like really reckless wild people who, uh, this, if, they, if they said, I feel like I'm called to be a watchman, that was one step from not going to church and, and two steps away from being a weirdo with a bunch of cats somewhere. Like, it, just, <laughs> it was a weird thing that weird people like to call themselves. We're not that. We like to be fairly normal here, but um, there's still a burden to be a watchman. Wherever you're at on the spectrum, you don't start in the third heaven, I promise you. If you think you started there, you've belittled what that means. Yeah. That's just a fact. Yeah. You'll start on one end, and God will stretch you, and we'll yeah. get to why that is later. Yeah. But he will stretch you the more you walk into it. Um, this is a line from Ezekiel where the Lord is speaking. The Lord came to me saying, Son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Hear my word from my mouth and give them the warning from me. We're not covering Israel right now, per se. We're not covering America right now, per se. I believe if we can't cover each other in this tribe, we're not qualified to cover a nation. And I don't say that as an indictment. I say that as a celebration. I do not want to cover a nation as my job. I want to stand with my brothers and sisters. Because this nation is made up of states and communities and churches and homes within. Yeah. We start here and we go out. You want to make a difference in this nation? Be nice in the grocery store. Yeah. If everybody did what Jesus said to do all the time, all the time, Revelation 22 just got a lot more real. Yes. The glory of God will cover the earth. Yes. Okay? We're called to be watched, but we're going to steward this thing. We're not guarding a nation. We're guarding a tribe. This is much easier because you probably already like your tribe. Your heart's already open. You might be discouraged by politics and things. In fact, um, if you're going to be a watchman, Further you go, the less you're going to want to watch the news. Amen. Unless you're going to want to read the paper, the less you're going to want to know what man says about man, because you want to hear something from the heavenly realm that man doesn't even understand. Yeah. If man doesn't understand it, then how can an ungodly newscaster tell you what it is? Yes. Yes? yes. yes. Okay. Why did I put drip drops of blood coming off a of watchman? That was weird. I know, right? <laughs> Sometimes there are jumps in language in translations that are um, hard to trace back. And figure out what steps were done where. These, these things were translated hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years ago, and they've evolved and progressed. And don't let anybody fool you. Uh, if there's not, it's, it evolves because language evolves, right? So yeah. I'll just stop there. Watchman, in the original Hebrew language, doesn't mean God who stands on tower and watches, it means outflowing of blood. Jesus. Yeah. It means flowing blood or outflowing of blood. Yeah, come on. Yes, yes. I don't know it, all no, of you who are moved. maybe a little more comfortable with these moved. ideas. That probably felt real good. Yes. Because it's the blood of Jesus that heals that heals the nation. It's the blood of Jesus that forgives the sin. It's the prayers of the intercessors that outflow the blood of Jesus yes. and wrap these wounds in a cast and smoke yes. to heal them and give them the sustaining force they need to grow back in the right place. Amen? Amen. That being said. Because we are, as I state, and I'm proud of this. I am so proud of it. I knew more crazy Christians than you could imagine. I could have filled this room up ten times with crazy Christians who knew how to call themselves watchmen, who knew how to do the Shaka Khan dance on command, who knew how to do all the good, and their life looked treacherous compared to the scriptures. They had no holiness. No righteousness. Yeah. They had no desire to follow the command of God. Let me just, just resolve once and for all. The spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead wasn't a license to sin. It was an empowerment to be just like him. Yes. Yes. And these men who were called watchmen, we're going to get to why this is in a little bit. The men who were called watchmen, historically, they were killed often. Do you know why? It wasn't because they were weird. Although they were. It wasn't because they said things that nobody understood. Although they did. 
It's because they were so righteous and holy, yes. they made everyone around them feel convicted, including yeah. the religious sex. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They tried to kill Benedict three times because he was just so righteous. Yeah. He made the monks. He made monks so convicted in their hearts that yes. the monks tried to kill yes. him Twice. because he made them look yes. bad. Yes. Yep. That's how much these watchmen yes. valued righteousness. Yes. Yeah? Mm. It's a journey to get there, I yes. promise you. You don't have to start at the top. If you don't feel like you're there, start right here, right now. You start somewhere, I promise you. I was not a righteous man when I found Jesus. Quite the opposite. But you start with the idea that I'm not that, but I want to be, and you just keep going. Yeah. You just keep going, and you just keep yeah. going, and God's going to do a thing. Yeah. Sometimes it's a bunch of things in one prayer session. Sometimes it's a couple decades. You probably should stop caring which one it is and just keep going because he's going to do a thing. Yeah? Yes. So in this body, we value all Christendom. We understand that not everybody feels called to do this. In fact, I don't even believe that everybody's called to do this. I wholeheartedly believe that God needs a bunch of people to do a bunch of things, and we don't all look alike. If we were all a bunch of prophets in this house, we're going to all prophesy to each other. That didn't make any sense. <laughs> we're going to live life together. We're going to we're going to bake bread. We're going to we're going to feed each other. We're going to help you. We're going to just do the thing. That's the thing that we're called to do all day, every day. But sometimes you need to know that guy. Sometimes you need to know what's going on. Yeah? yeah. There was uh, Elijah. Elisha. Once Elisha had the mantle, and he was the prophet guy. You know, he's off doing his thing. Guess where he's at? Not in the middle of society. He's off um, worshiping the Lord, talking to God. He's, he's hearing what's up. All the kings, all the politics in the area, they decided that they were going to do what kings do best. They were going to come together and go to war and conquer more land. And once they got into it, they realized they bit off more than they could chew because they were doing what kings did best and not what God told them to do. They said, what are we going to do? We need to find a guy who can bring God to this party. And they found Elijah. Let me tell you how little a watchman cares about politics. And they said, here's what's going on. He said, what's it to me? Just so you get a spectrum of how I feel about watchmen and politics, that's where you should start, yes. maybe with where Elijah, the man of power, was. Yes. Yeah? I can lay, I can rattle off those guys all the way to the 1900s. The, the hardcore ones that we wrote in the history book, they did not get entangled in the affairs of this world. Because if you're going to hear something that's unhuman, you don't hear a bunch of human stuff at the same time. Yeah. It will pollute your, your yeah. eyes, your ears, your sensories. It'll pollute everything in you, about yeah. you. Even some preaching we've heard recently. It was <laughs> like, wow, we had to cover our children's ears. Yes. And I'm like, what's going on with this world? That's another story. Okay. <laughs> I say this to say, God needs everyday normal people that don't even want to be called prophets. He needs a ton of them. Tons of them. And you're not required to make sense of all this if you're in that category. If you've been here any amount of time at all, you probably think to yourself, that's a pretty normal dude most of the time. It's because I am. I'm not hiding anything. I'm just a normal dude who likes to talk about normal things. I live a normal life. Yeah? You're not required to make sense of all this, but you should start to open your heart and maybe see if you can find a value for it. Yes. yes. And if you can find a value for it, for it, well, then you can begin to get um, traction from it. Yeah? Yes. So it's been your best interest to know these people and maybe give them a chance. I put reference Isaiah 9. If you'd like to go back and read that story, it's a good example of why it's good to know the prophet. Sometimes they see things in the yeah. spirit. That's just good to know. I'll give you a brief synopsis of that. This is one of the many stories in the Bible that most people don't talk about. There's a time where Israel's gone so astray from God that he's going to, as they do in the Old Testament from time and time again, he's going to purge the palate, if you will. And he's about to come through and, um, you know, cleanse them of their wickedness, if you will. And Ezekiel sees in the spirit, he sees these archangel types coming in with, with axes of war to decimate the unrighteous population. And then there's this one in ink, in a, in, a, in, a, in a white robe with an ink horn. And the Spirit of the Lord says to that guy, go forth first yes. and mark everyone in this city who's crying out the abominations of this nation. And he comes back and he says, I'm done. And he looked at the other ones with the axes and he says, 
kill everyone who doesn't have the mark. Now, maybe that's the time you want to know the weird dude who says, it's time to cry out for the abominations. It's time to start praying. Now, I'm not projecting that God's going to do that now. I'm not a doom and gloom guy. I'm actually, this is all much more positive, but I'm trying to make the case for those who like are like, that's weird stuff. I don't know about that. Yeah, it is weird stuff, and you don't know about that sometimes, but you're going to wish you did at times. Yeah. There are times when it moves a mountain, and it makes no sense at all. Yeah? Yeah. And the more comfortable this mixed group can be with these uncomfortable ideas, yeah. the faster we can move mountains. Yes. Amen? Yes. I put it at the bottom. If you can read that, it's a little bit smaller print. This is important. This is important little conversation. You bring bring visitors, you bring guests. Maybe they, for some reason, they get prayer. Maybe they're hearing some things they're not used to hearing. Um, uh, visitors are going to say, or maybe you should put one more. You say, what do you think about all that? This is what I used to do at Haiti Mission. I went to a charismatic church growing up. <laughs> what do you think about all that? And they'd say, what's that all about? That was weird. I don't, I don't get all that. And then sometimes, this might be the best answer you have. I don't always know, but it seems to make a difference. Yeah. That's about as far. It tells you if you don't get this, if this is not your calling, that's about all you really have to know. I don't really know, <laughs> but it works. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like it just works. I don't know how. It, most of you don't know how your engine your car runs, <laughs> <laughs> but it works. You're like, I just I go get the profit, I put the gas hand in, I do that, and then and I do that, and it goes. <laughs> it's the same thing in prayer life. Yes. Yes. I say that to say, these people called to do this, as they grow and step into their anointing, their calling, they're going to have to abandon reality more and more and more and more. Now, those who want to do this, I'm going to work with you if you want someone to work with you. I'm going to also teach you how to put on your, put on your normal face and come back to reality because it's a lonely life if you don't learn how to do both. That being said, they're going to come back and there are going to be times when they say to do things that seem weird, that seem odd. There's going to be natural acts that they have just, just maybe they saw something in the spirit, heard a word from God. Maybe they just had some kind of weird knowing. That sounds really wild and scary. Like, I don't know about Jesus talking about that. Well, the whole Bible's full of it. Yeah. There was a moment where uh, God, God was going to, and this is weird language, I know, but you have to wrestle with scripture, right? God was going to kill Moses one time. He was angry at Moses. And Zipporah, his wife, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to infer here that she had a knowing. Her spirit just knew what to do. Yes. It doesn't even say why he's mad. It just says he's mad. He's, gonna, he's angry. He's going to anger. His God's going to kill him. Sephora knew what to do. She went and took a flint knife and cut off the foreskin of another son and threw it between God and Moses. And that weird O, like, you'd be like, oh, man, she's never coming back to dinner after that. <laughs> it saved his life. <laughs> These seemingly weird things sometimes move spiritual mountains, and they become the wall between uh, destruction and success. They become the, the, the thing that the cast that holds everything in place. Yes? Mm -hmm. Boy, I didn't put that up there. It's the Exodus 4.25. I'm going to rattle through some of these and run out of town. Read all of Zechariah. Let's just, if you're struggling with this Christian I'm supposed to be weird, the answer is you don't have to be weird, but here's some weird stuff. Read all of Zechariah. Yeah. I raised my eyes and looked, and there was four horns, and I said to the angel, what are these? He, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Look, and there was a man with a measuring line in his hand. I'm like, where is he going? <laughs> you know, he starts off with, I was in a vision, and I saw four, I saw a man on a sorrel, a myrtle horse come up, and it was a red and a white and a sorrel behind him. It's the four horsemen of the apocalypse are showing up in his vision. By the way, it's not, it doesn't say apocalypse, but that's what we call them in America. Yeah. And then he's like, what are they doing? It's like, they're roaming to and fro the earth. And some weird stuff. I get it. And it's not like you take that and you're like, I'm going to work and I'm going to lead people to Jesus with the four horsemen talk. Like, <laughs> no, it doesn't work. I promise. I know a guy who tried for like seven Aww. years. Yeah. Didn't have great success with that. But yeah. that being said, there are times when you need to see it. Yeah. There are times when somebody needs to see the weird stuff to know that it's moving. Yeah. Um, I, I saw, I'll just share. Are you good? Who are you looking at? Yeah, can I share? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. Gosh, I thought I was like, is it, yeah. Walking through the valley. I spent a lot of time walking through the valley by the river, talking to the Lord so that I'm absent of distraction. Absent of distraction. I was praying for all of you. I saw clear as day. I saw this ginormous eagle, like the size of this room, 
flying through the air. Actually, I think it was a bunch of eagles, but there was one I was focused on. And it flew down, and it got Amanda Poole to get on its back, and it took her for a magic journey. Now, that's all that I saw. That's all that I knew. I didn't care to interpret what exactly that meant, although I could have guessed. I shared exactly what I saw in text form, I think. Yes. And she responded to it in her heart. And then she had this encounter with the Lord. She had this breakthrough with the Lord. It led her in a natural journey, but she partnered with it because she's been around me for five or six years. And she knows that that crazy stuff can bear some weird good fruit. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Now, you might not know what the big eagle come of you means. But that's when you start asking God, I don't know what that means, but I want that big eagle to come get me. Because that crazy man in the mountain valley said he was coming. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Furthermore, if you don't think there's some weird stuff in Scripture, read the beginning of Ezekiel, read uh, chapter 1, read uh, chapter 1. This, the seraphim is throughout the Bible, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Revelation. It's a four-sided creature, all right? You think God is all normal? There's a four-sided creature here with four faces that only look alike. There's a man, an ox, an eagle, and a lion. It's got six wings, two on its head, two on its feet, two that fly. It's got hooves like a calf, and it moves, and lightning flashes between them as they move. That's some weird stuff. But it's good to know somebody who can see when they're moving because that means something. Yeah. yeah? Yes. There's a wheel next to them. And inside that wheel, there's another wheel. And on the outer rim of the outer rim of the outer wheel, there's eyes that shine bright. And, where, and, and the spirit of the thing is in the wheel. And wherever the seraphim move, the wheel moves. Yeah. And when they always go straight, they never turn. Yet they always get where they're going. Now I'll let you chew on that one for the next 20 years and come back and tell me what you think that means. Yeah? <laughs> I'm not trying to tell you that this is going to get you through everyday life. I'm trying to tell you that this stuff is chalked throughout the whole Bible yes. because we live in a tiny natural bubble inside of an enormous spiritual world. Yes. And there's a lot going on on the other side, and it's okay if you don't see it, but I'm trying to build value in your heart for those who can. Yes. And also know that they're all naturally going to be a little weird at times. Okay. How beautiful, this is back in Isaiah, another man who can go in and out. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings the good news, who proclaims peace, who proclaims yes. glad tidings of good things, who proclaims yes. salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. How beautiful are the feet of those of you who take the good yes. news yes. everywhere you go. Yes. Everywhere you go, you take the good news of the gospel, transforming your heart everywhere you go. Now, a lot of people know that line. The next one, your watchmen shall lift up their voices, and with their voices they shall sing together, for they shall see eye to eye. Yep. Eye to eye, those of us called or want to answer this intercession, watchmen, prophetic call, we can all, we should all be seeing one thing because we have one God with one plan. It's going to come filter through different filters. It'll come across a little different, but it'll be one message. And we're going to learn to work together for those who want to answer this and stand in the gap for those who are getting healed. Now, it's not all about four horsemen and seraphim and wheels within the wheels. Sometimes it's just about opening your heart and letting God knit people to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've, I've been talking to a guy about um, business stuff pertaining to the church. And he I didn't even know God was doing it, but he knit my heart to him and his family. Unknowing to me. But what that means is I can start to know things. I think I don't even live in this state. I start to know things. When I start to know things, I start to pray things. When I start to pray things, I'll feel to say things. When I start to say things, they start to you start to see breakthrough and people are partner with it and move in it. You have to open your heart. I, I didn't call them up and say the four horsemen were knocking on the door and the word and the sorrel one was mad. I just call them, you just tell them what you just tell them what God's saying. Yeah. He will he will put people on your heart. If you begin to answer this yeah. call, worry. If I could erase one word from your vocabulary, it would be that one. Yes. The thing that people mistake often is that God has, when God has knit someone to your heart to some degree, when they think about their problem, they think about worrying for them. It is literally the most counterproductive thing yes. you will ever, ever yes. do as a Christian. Slap yourself. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> God put them on your heart to intercede for the breakthrough you know is coming. How do you know it's coming? Because you know a guy who's good every time. 
You know a guy named Jesus who never failed. You know a guy who paid for it all. You know a guy who wants to heal all things. If you don't think God wants to heal all things all the time, then you should have been with us on the streets of Brooklyn. There was some rough people, and God was healing them left and right. And they didn't get their act right after that. And I think God knew that was coming. I mean, he just wants to heal people. He yes. just wants people to be whole. Yes. He just wants to touch. Because if you can, if he can touch them, he can plant a seed. Yes. If he can plant a seed, then it can grow. If it can grow, it can begin to bear fruit one day. Yes. Yes. He plays much longer games than we do sometimes. Mm -hmm. By playing games, I mean like, a, the, you know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Longer plans. <laughs> I use a lot of slang language to make curse in very uncomfortable times. <laughs> Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We gotta move faster. We're out of time. The watchman must be willing to leave the safety of the shores of reality. You have to be willing to leave it to be good at this on any level. It will start. Just give you anybody who wants to do this, we need to get together. It is really, really hard to work with this in a group setting. I've never figured out how to do this in a group setting, to be honest with you. But in a everybody is there and is willing to be awkward together. In a smaller group, it can be done. You have to be willing to leave reality. You have to be willing to let your childlike imagination, yeah. which is the first thing you're going to think of. You're going to think of this is like when I was a kid. Well, guess what? Kids are really good at some of this yes, stuff. Yes, they are. You're going to have to let your what you think is your imagination take off. Now, if you're worried about jobs and blah, 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 it's going to pollute everything that happens next. If you can clear yourself of worry and worry and doubts about reality, what happens next might be a little more God than you think. Yeah. And that what you think is your imagination. You learn to trust it. You learn to recognize the difference first off. And then you learn to trust it. But it will take you from reality into kind of like the Peter Pan story. Never, never land. It will take you into a place where reality doesn't bind you. It holds you down. It's just there. And you will start to know things. And you will start to hear things and see things. And it might not make sense. But if you can come back and with boldness, not try to explain it to people, but just speak it, it can move mountains. It can become the shift. Yes? Yes. Deal with your junk before you leave. This is very important. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to go a little faster to wrap this up. The reason I say deal with your junk before you go, this is not about you have to earn your way into the third heaven. Absolutely not. It's about you deserve to deal with your junk before you get there. Isaiah, the guy we mentioned earlier. John, Revelation, Ezekiel. These are guys who were so holy, most people wanted to kill them just to get rid of the competition. Com competition. Right? These dudes were straight with God. You know what they said when they got there? Woe is me. Yeah. I'm undone. I come from an unclean land and I'm an unclean man and I don't I shouldn't be here. I'm not gonna make it. This is too intense. Too intense. John ended up in Revelation. Jesus shows up in Revelation, this story of Revelation. John falls down, he's like, I shouldn't be here. I'm not this is no. yes. now. If God opens the door to get you in there, he's willing to, to uh, make it okay that you're there. The seraphim come, take a hot coal from the altar. That's weird stuff, I know. Flies over with tongs. He can't touch it with his hands. Tongs. Comes over and burns Isaiah's lips. He's like, yeah, you're good. And then he could be there again. Yeah? Safely. He was purged. He was there. John. He's told, like, no, stand up. John keeps, it's so intense for John that he keeps forgetting and falling down to worship and everybody's like, no, stand up. We're just going to Come on, stand up. People who talk about going into the third heaven like it's Dollar General on a Tuesday, I promise you, it's not that. It is intense. I don't care who you are. I don't care how close to God you think you are. If it doesn't feel intense, you're not quite there yet, and that's okay. But it's real, and it's there. And it's in the Bible. And if you can dare to let go of reality, and you can dare to take these journeys with God. Now, do you have to do this 24-7? No. But if you're going to answer this call, you got to do it some. And you better not waste the rest of your time with preoccupied thoughts and blah, blah, blah. But you can't begin to leave reality and step into another realm, the heavenly realm of God and Jesus in the heavens. And you can begin to see things and hear things and you begin to intercede for people. And I'll be honest with you, um, I would say about seven out of ten times I don't call you and tell you what it is. Seven out of ten times I don't. I'll, I'll see things, I'll pray for you, I'll, move, I'll try to move things in the spirit, I'll see things. I, I, I will, I will ask, to, I'll ask things to come around you while you're in your day because God's showing it to me, and I never feel to tell you. 
Yeah. Yeah. I've been praying for Amanda Poole like that almost weekly since the day I met her. Now, I can't turn on and off who God shows me, but God, that woman must cry out to God. Yes. Because he shows me every time I look in the spirit, I can see her. Yep. Now, that's just how we, we know. We, we good. <laughs> we go way back. We do. If you can escape reality, if you can hear things and come back and use them wisely, we're not trying to be weirdos. We're trying to be useful. Yes. Yeah. How you make that balance, that's a journey. It takes a little bit of learning curve. We yeah. will get there. First, I gotta make you I gotta get you a little weirder, and then I can make you learn how to be normal. Okay? <laughs> but if you can dare to take this journey, there will be people who talk about you because it will make a difference. And they will say, I once knew a man 13 years ago who went into the heavens, whether in body or out of the body. I don't actually know. God knows. Only God knows if his body actually went there or if his spirit went there and that was enough. Only God knows. But that guy went and he heard things. And some things he came back and said and some things he was told to seal up because man couldn't hear it yet. But either way, I want to know that guy because even if he ain't saying it, I bet he's alluding to it. Yeah? yeah. So these prayer teams, we're going to work together. We're going to slowly... Uh, we're a little distracted with the building the last couple weeks, but I promise you, we're going to move forward with these prayer teams. This is phase two. Transforming a town, transforming a region, a youth in a region, yes. it requires prayer. 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 Yep. prayer. Yeah? Yeah. Yep. Yes. And so we're going to pray. We're going to stir the spirit. We're going to intercede into the healing and past the healing. We're going to be the cast that holds it in place while it begins to heal in the proper straight manner. Yes? Yes. Yeah. We're going to speak blessings and thanks. We didn't cover that one today. Um, earlier really ran out of time we'll do it next but it's very important it's very important i told you when we talked about this a couple weeks ago blessings and thanks the person who can speak that over somebody it's like that cup of cold water when you're running the marathon on mile 24 and you just don't think you can make it and then somebody's standing there with that little chintzy paper cup and it's just enough to keep you going that's what most people need most of the time if you need a book, if you need prayer, you feel desperate and not, and the prophet can't see a vision and nobody's doing, and it's just not nothing's working. But somebody's like just speaking blessings and thanking God for. Be of good cheer. That means you didn't need the whole army to come down. You just needed a cup of cold water. Yeah. 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 We'll cover that more in detail later. Yeah. But I say that to say, start asking the Lord now. Where do you want to be? The person who can answer this call. That's step one. Do you even want to be the person who prays for other people, whether they know it or not? Do you want to be that? Step two is, where do I start, God? Where do I start? Begin to purge your life of all the things that you already know shouldn't be there. And then just expand the tent stakes of your heart and see who God puts on it. You don't have to pray for everybody. You don't have to pray for the whole world. God will put somebody in there for you to stand with. Amen? Yes. Amen. You will never, ever feel alone again. You walk with God in this. If you can leave the shores of reality, you'll never feel alone again because you'll know you'll you'll learn how to walk with God on command eventually. Never lonely again. Yeah. But even long before that, if you can expand the tent stakes of your heart and let God put people in there, tie you together, you'll never feel lonely again. There are people who cut, who bring great comfort to our hearts here, who live mm -hmm. in other states and other countries because we're knit together in heart. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have to talk to them all the time. Yeah. We just know them in the heart. Yep. God is good. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 So Jesus, right now, we just ask you, Lord, to release a special grace in this room to all those who are going to answer the call of prayer warrior. We ask you, Lord, to release the special grace right now to awaken this generation of people who are going to be the soldiers that stand in the gap between this realm and that realm and this yes. and this problem and that solution. We're going to stand in the gap and we're going to say this you go problem goes no further. It goes no further. It cannot pass me in the Barney Fife badge. It goes yes. no further. Yes. And we're going to stand with our with the people who come for prayer. We're going to stand with them in their healing. We're going to stand with people and we're going to intercede. We're going to see them in the spirit. And we're never going to worry again. Why would we worry about somebody who you began to support? 
Why would we worry about somebody who you're just showing us? And if you're showing us, you're showing other people. You don't forsake your children, yes. nor do you depend on someone else yes. to carry the load. You will share their burden yes. on as many open, available hearts as you can find. And we're speaking right now that Dayspring Ministry be a body of people who want to carry the burden for others' breakthroughs. We thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for... We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the mighty work you've done pertaining to this building, for the mighty move yeah. that you've done, Lord, in the finances, Lord Jesus, yes. how you put on people's hearts to knit together, Lord Jesus. And when I, I am just so thankful and touched and just moved in my heart to see the people online given who can't even go to this church, the people who, who just who just believed, I'm, I'm, I'm just knowing you put in their heart to put at least one rock in the foundation of this church. To put one rock deep in the foundation so that as we move forward in the spirit, they move forward in the spirit. And we just thank you, Lord Jesus, for the mighty work you've done. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the work you're going to continue to do. We just speak, Lord Jesus, that we have favor and grace right now with the, with the lending institutions. And that we resolve all of our paperwork issues right immediately this week and we get an answer immediately. We just release yes. more funds to come, yes. more people. Not that we, we, we don't just need money. We need more partners in the spirit, yes. Lord Jesus. People who believe in what you're doing in this region, in this time. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Right now, Lord Jesus, the Lord's telling me just to give those of you who are going to go home and try some of this. It's okay to try things. The Lord said it's okay to try things, and the Lord said to give you permission to feel silly. Yes. Yep. He's giving you permission to feel silly. Yep. We just thank you, Lord Jesus, as you're taking these, our, taking our prayer warriors, Lord Jesus, take them on a journey. Yes. Take them on a journey into the never, never land of your realms, of your heavens. We thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.